Hey YouTube, what's going on? It's Richard, founder of Short Term Rental University and Airbnb Superhost. Today I want to talk to you about something that is like really pretty straightforward. You won't get a lot of accolades for it, but you can get a lot of demerits if you don't do it right. And that is the check-in process. So what do I mean by that? Well, basically it's one of those things where it should be flawless and nobody should notice and therefore they're not going to comment on it or give you five stars as a result of it. It's just sort of expected that the check-in be smooth. However, taking a look at our Facebook group, you will see constant questions about how to do it, how to get it done, what if I can't meet them, and so on and so forth. And it's evident that it gives everybody a lot of problems, and it's a concern, and it really doesn't have to be. It can be completely tailored to your circumstances, but I want to encourage you to do something that's repeatable and sustainable so that you can enjoy a very lengthy hosting experience and really monetize your dreams. So let me just share with you how I do it, and it's really property dependent. In many places, I do self-check-in sounds really easy. It should be really straightforward. And it is in my case, and I think in many host cases. But in people that either don't take the time to explain exactly how to do it very thoroughly, like what's obvious to you is not obvious to somebody who's never been there. They could be jet lagged, they could be exhausted, they may have driven 12 hours. So when you say, find the lockbox, that's not very helpful. Be very specific. It's on the back side of the mermaid's tail and it's uh, you know bronze in color to match in, so you have to really use your hand to feel it. That would be a good description, and I could find that. The other thing that I want to mention is, in that being very specific, try and make it really easy too. So don't include multiple keys with multiple locks and explain that this one works on the bottom lock and then find this key with the top lock and so on. If you're going to do the self-check-in, invest whatever you need to to make sure that it's a really easy process. Maybe have one key that works in both locks or do a deadbolt. Whatever it is, don't expect people to know exactly your process and procedure because they won't. And the more time and energy they have to expend getting into it, the less happy they're going to be. So just make it really easy. One key, no color coding. I have one lock, one combination. I describe exactly where it is and I have it really well lit so that no matter when they come, it's ready for them. And I have it centrally located so that if they have to put down their bags or whatever, they're not like in the bush and underneath and just realize people are carrying stuff. They just want to get inside. And if you do all those things, I think self-check-in is probably the best experience. Again, guests aren't really expecting much more than that. They just don't want to fumble. They don't want to have problems. So if you're going to meet them yourself, then that's great. But realize that that's going to take a lot of your time, your energy. You may feel great about it today, but you may not feel very good about it 14 years forward interrupting your family meal to run down to the cabin to let somebody else in. So if that's part of your enjoyment and you love meeting everyone, then that's great. If it's something that you feel you have to do and you're doing it and you're, every time you get called away, you're kind of like, ugh, I don't really like hosting, then that should indicate to you that you need a different solution and it's time to go self-check-in. And then of course the third option is, like I said, partner with somebody that's local who doesn't mind being interrupted or is perhaps being paid to be interrupted and they can go walk through and like get the guests inside and so on. So there's a myriad of ways to do all this and one isn't better than the other. If you put a gun to my head I would say that the friendly touch about having somebody meet somebody in person and walk them through is great. I've never really done that. I don't have the time to do that. I have multiple remote locations so it's not scalable. It's not possible for me to do that. But if I wanted to run like a bed and breakfast sort of thing and that was my thing, then yeah, it's great. But don't think that you have to do that because it'll hamper you, it'll make it so that you don't grow and you don't scale and you don't expand your business. And at the end of the day, our goal, I believe, as hosts is to run a profitable, successful business, become an Airbnb entrepreneur and then a real estate entrepreneur. And if things are going really well, maybe a broader, more of an entrepreneur, a general entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur. How about that? The check-in process is really straightforward. Don't overly complicate it. Just make sure people can get in. It's well lit, it's well explained, it's well documented. Don't overcomplicate things, friends. Hope you liked the video. <laughs>